It has officially been one year since my dad and I finished my DIY truck camper, the shoebox. And boy, did we make a lot of mistakes. The roof leaked, we put a window in upside down, an animal broke in, and it's pretty damn heavy. And trust me, that is just the beginning. But hey, I started this project with zero knowledge about truck campers, and I started sharing these videos so people can learn from my mistakes and hopefully see that they too can accomplish whatever harebrained project they can think of. I'm not here to say my camper is perfect. I'm here to share the story of my first attempt at a DIY truck camper. I know she's a long ways away from perfect, but at the end of the day, she's handmade. So what more could you expect? Okay, so we got my dad here. We're doing the one year walkthrough on the camper. My dad's gonna describe the design and everything we tried to do during the build, what worked and what didn't. So without further ado, let's get into it. What I really like about this is this wing. It cuts through the wind. Coming up from Camor with uh, 60 mile an hour headwinds, just cut right through. Sweet. Just slip right through. And how is, how is the gap here? Is there much wind noise when you're in the driver's seat? When you're looking through the, uh, the skylight there, it just vibrates a little bit, but very little movement. It's solid. This camper does not move. You can see the little gap there. You can drive all over town, it's not gonna move. This thing is rock solid. And here, quickly, Dad, talk about the original jack posts. The original jack posts were construction camper jack posts, which were extremely heavy. We removed those because we now have mobile jacks that lift the whole camper from the edge. The tripod arrangement just lifts it. So we eliminated one here, one here, four in total, which eliminated about 200 pounds. Here yeah. Right. Real wind here on these porthole windows. These are so sweet. They bring in a lot of light, a lot of ventilation, and they look real cool. <laughs> this was the standard slider window. Window good for ventilation too. Really though, the, these main windows are like I use those only 90% of the time. I like the portholes because they provide light, but. I rarely open them, but I use the main window first and then the roof vent second. Yeah. And then the other thing we can talk about maybe is these roof racks. We actually wish I added one more back here because the problem is this thing stick way too far out. Like I tried pulling a toolie up there. They're not mounted level either. We could have raised yeah. the back one up. Somebody commented that on TikTok. But regardless, it actually holds my surfboard pretty well. Like if I just need to strap some things to the roof, they do great. The other downside is it's just so high in the air. I mean, yeah. up there with a ladder, it's tough. Up. It's 10 feet to get up there. So it is quite, quite far. Two big bonuses here. It's a propane outboard here, the drain here for the sink, and also the battery pack over here. Everything's outside sitting on the tailgate really economizes on the space gives you the full service of power fuel and sanding all built in it's pretty compact uh, recently added the uh, backup cameras sweet because the cameras only get you i should say the, the side view mirrors only get you so far around the, the back end so this is going to see everything at the at the rear here which we'll show you on the video. When you're building the truck camper, it's pretty hard to see what the mirrors can see. You can see like down low. So you can see down low, but it really is hard to know what you're gonna be able to see behind you when you're building the camper. That really works well in the ventilation here. Minimal leaks now that we got the caulking on the outside. I had a little issue with that earlier. <laughs> Similarly with the windows. Just for the record, the camper is not in perfect shape. We got some insulation missing up there. We still have a little bit of a leaky window down here. Well, it's actually not bad right now. You notice if you think everything is super compact. You got your sink here, but also a work table. Cooler, yeah. stove, prep area, doubles as a seat when relocated. Yeah. Control panel, super sized bed, queen. Yeah. Extra room. Lounge. Notice the bed slots. Those are new-ish. Give you ventilation so you don't get moisture and mold under there. We can show you guys. This but is real barn wood. That is a spacious bed. You gotta yeah. that. It's big. Really lounging area. So, sometimes I have had it where I flip the bed this way. Because, like, it fits right. that way and you can have the whole side. But I like having it like this because then you can sit up there and you can kind of sit up there like if you have two people across the ways from each other 
full window here. And then other than that, we kind of have a cabinet up here. Good storage up top. Carbon monoxide and smoke detector. The wood stove, of course. These eco logs are currently my favorite for overnight. Got the magnet bar. I think I'm going to relocate this to the kitchen over here. What's your favorite part of the inside design, Dad? The wood stove, obviously. It gives you your first source of heat. Have you ever emptied the ashes out of this? Place? What do you mean, ever? I empty them all the time. You I do? just, yeah, okay. I just need to. Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah, and I've cleaned the glass a couple times oh, yeah, too. Right? But honestly, in one fire, it gets black again. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, and with these, I get hot coals in the morning like all the time. You do, eh? Yeah. But absolutely no problems with this. We got our heat shield here, as you can see. Yeah. Dry my rags. It's a little messy, but. This little tray here is a nice firewood storage. The cubby, it stays nice and cold down there. No risk for the firewood. There's the electrical panel down there. This is my battery cut off. So instantly I can just, nothing works once you cut it off. This is my fuse box. I'll explain it all in a second. But here we have our first few switches. This close one is actually for these outside floodlights. I have two of them. You can see through the window there. And then the next switch here is for my main four interior lights. This switch down here is actually for my DC to DC charger. Fuse box and everything, which runs here. This switch is for these. My dad's going for the porthole. See, it's probably sealed pretty tight. You're gonna have to give it a good... Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, there's the ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> no leaks in these, eh? No, no leaks. Beautiful. And then the second light switch does this. Took a lot of and then to put the portable windows in that way, didn't it? This is my charging unit basically right here. This here is like my drying rack for all my ski gear. This stuff too with the eye bolts and stuff like that. And also all these hooks are used for hanging up gear. This is just like my dishcloth. This is my can stove. Like I said, we normally have the cooler underneath. And this is the little buddy heater, propane heater. This is the morning heat when I don't wanna get the fire going or if I'm just quickly parked for an hour making some lunch or something, quick heat. And yeah, that thing has done some wonders. We got water and garbage underneath. Also some other cleaning supplies and my fire extinguisher. Okay, so this is a three-purpose piece of wood. It's actually pretty cool, but my brother-in-law, Matt, who made this, this space here is exactly the same space that goes right here. So I'll show you first and foremost, just pop it out. I like to have it up there whenever I'm camping alone, but this is kind of nice. I like to call this my love seat, my guest bed, or yeah, so I can sit here and watch the fire. Oh, I just hit the lights with my back. That happens sometimes hang out a bit if you're just you know on your own anything but also of course you have a full guest bed it sleeps somebody up to six six actually so pretty wide in here it's wider down here than it is up here but i'm only 510 so that's no big deal and then the next purpose is we grab this piece of wood down here it never falls it's it's a damn near miracle and a little bit finicky to get this piece of wood in because we have these bolts with holes. So you just go like that. That, you can tap these in if you want. Once I drill these holes a bit better, they'll just go in. These bolts basically just prevent the table from falling that way. Super sturdy table though. Look at use that. Use it a lot? I use the one I had up there the most, when I'm camping alone, I hardly even move it because I just eat holding. But this is kind of like second most, I'd say, when I have two people, it's nice. The thing about having this here or in the guest bed, you take up a lot of standing room. So when it's over there, you have, you know, two feet more standing room. So yeah, other than that, you know, we got a little bit of storage underneath there. I keep most of my bags. There's another 24 inches, two feet, on the other side of my bed. That's usually where I keep all my bags and stuff when I'm camping up here, all my clothes, that's what the bins are there for. 
And yeah, other than that, I just want to give you guys a one year update, a one year walkthrough of the camper. Simplified some things, changed some things, took the jack posts off. But other than that, it's kind of same, same as normal in here. But other than that, just want to give you the one year update. So have a great day.